If you're a fan of barbershop fragrances but desire something a little bit more intriguing, then this is for you. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content. So you already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below and also be sure to check me out over on my Instagram page. But today in my hands is one of the most unique Fougere barbershop fragrances I have ever smelled in my entire life. This stuff is something very, very different. And that's actually a really good thing because when it comes to Fougere barbershop style fragrances in that genre, they are very much alike. There's only so much you could really do with that DNA. But what DS and Durga did with this is outstanding. So before we go ahead and talk about the fragrance, let's go with some information about this one now. This was launched back in 2008. I think it was one of the first launches from DS and Durga. They have been around for quite some time now and is a house that I've been meaning to check out for a very, very long time. And this is one of the ones that I wanted to check out first and of course got a bottle of it. Now, as far as the retail price, you can get the 50 ml like I have in hand for $190 or you can get the bigger bottle, the 100 ml for $280. So it is up there in price, but honestly not that unreasonable for being a niche brand. The concentration for this one is an Eau de Parfum and the perfumer behind this, and I believe most of the DS and Durga fragrances is David Death Maltz. I'm not really sure exactly who he is, if what other fragrances he has made, if any outside of this house, but he is the nose behind Burning Barbershop. Now with all the information out of the way, let's look at the packaging and presentation you get with this one now. Now take a look at the box, which has a kind of three dimensional shape to it, which I really like. Of course you have the cutout of the bottle, DS and Durga right there. On top you have the DSD logo, nothing on the side. On this side you do have a pullout where your bottle is housed in there as well. On the bottom, some of your information with your batch code right there to authenticate a product to see when it was produced. And then on the back, where I do actually want to read this story. Of course, you have the style, Eau de Parfum. There's a story, all the notes right there, ingredients, and your size. But the story says, a fire broke out in the Curling Bros Barbershop in Westlake, New York in 1891. All the shaving tonics with their spearmint, lime, and vanilla, and lavender burned. A charred bottle was found half full. It smelled like this. So that is basically the story on which Burning Barbershop is based off of. And I think it is a real story, which is very, very cool. So let's look at the bottle now. All right, looking at the bottle, which I think looks fantastic. I love the kind of aesthetic they went with this one. It kind of matches the whole vibe and the way this fucking smells. Of course, you have the label on the front, which is a cream off-white kind of tone. Burning Barbershop, DS and Durga, Eau de Parfum, 50 ml. Nothing on the sides. On the bottom, you do have, I believe, etched in, or that might be a sticker, I can't really tell. But you do have all your information, as well as your batch code right there in the corner. On top, you have the DSD logo. Now, this cap is, I think it is metal. It is actually weighted. Nothing inside the cap, nothing on the atomizer. And it does cook into place. But look how kind of shallow that atomizer collar is. It kind of, every time you spray it, it does get onto the top, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But it does cook into place very, very tight. In the top, you have hemlock fir, lime, and spearmint. In the mid, you have lavender and rose. And in the base, you have burnt oil, hay, and vanilla. And this will be classified as a smoky spicy. So let's spray this and test out these atomizers. Honestly, nothing great about the atomizer at all. It's not pressurized and it does shoot very narrow and not that much juice. So let's go ahead and smell this very interesting take on a barbershop style fragrance. Now, right away, I do have to tell you guys, this is gonna be a very, very challenging fragrance to most people that get their nose on it. Unless you are experienced and you have tried a lot of fragrances in your life, then you might actually enjoy this one like I do. I love this fragrance, to be honest. I did smell it at a perfumery in a vlog that I actually filmed and I fell in love with it immediately and obviously got a bottle of it then and there. And I like this fragrance that much that I went ahead and paid full retail for the 50 ml bottle, like around $200 and you even can find these heavily discounted on of course the rack stores and discount stores and things like that. So yeah, this is actually a good fragrance. What you're gonna get immediately when you spray Burning Shop on skin is a very uplifting, juicy lime note, along with this very vibrant, minty spearmint as well that just kind of combine so well together. So you are gonna get a fresh top, but what makes this one stand out the most to me in that opening at least, is that hemlock note. Now. If you're not familiar with the note of hemlock, it is actually 
what was used as a poison way back in the day. And that kind of gives it this dark, mysterious nature behind the entire scent profile. I actually know the note of Hemlock from a fragrance called Ormond Man by Ormond Jane, which is also a very unique creation. I'm getting a bottle of that very, very soon. But this is the second time I've ever seen Hemlock used in a fragrance is within Burning Barbershop and they nailed it. And once you make your way into the mid of Burning Barbershop is where that name starts to come to life with the barbershop name at least. You're going to get a very kind of spicy, slightly creamy lavender note. And of course you can't have a barbershop fragrance without including lavender in my opinion. When I think of barbershop fougeres, lavender is the first note that comes to mind. Of course alongside like sage, cypress, maybe rosemary, those kinds of notes are like the main ones. But lavender without a doubt is a must. And the lavender in this one is exactly how I like my lavender to be very spicy smelling very natural as well which you're gonna obviously expect when you pay a high price like this one for niche fragrances so yeah it's very well done lavender that rose on the other hand I'm not getting any rose at all to my nose so if you don't like rose you definitely can still try this one out don't be scared but if you do love rose yeah you're not really gonna get much of it if at any at all at least to my nose maybe you guys can pick it up but it's just full on lavender once you get to the mid. And finally, when you get into the base of Burning Barbershop is where I think the most challenging part is because you are gonna get this burst of smoke, almost like a charred smoke, and that's coming from that burnt oil note. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it definitely has a burning sensation to it. And you're also gonna get a very earthiness, like very earthy tones from the note of hay which kind of gives us this farmish vibe about it as well. Very interesting, very unique, and stands out amongst all other barbershops I've ever smelled. You are gonna get a nice rounded, creamy, a little bit spicy, kind of spicy from like the top, mid, and base, but a very creamy, well done, cozy, comforting vanilla as well alongside the burnt oil and that earthy hay. Just a stunning DNA for anybody that loves Fougere barbershop style fragrances. I think this one is honestly a must try, at least getting a sample or a decant of it. And I think that you will fall in love, especially if you love this genre of perfumery. And for me, I have so many Fougere barbershop style fragrances within my big collection, as you see behind me. And this one is a showstopper and stands out amongst all the others. For the seasons that I recommend wearing this one is absolutely for the fall and winter without a doubt, but can even be pulled off in like a slightly warmer climate like the springtime because of that nice kind of spearmint lime top note and obviously being a kind of floral lavender heavy fragrance as well, perfect for the fall, winter and spring. Not so much the summertime even though it does have a kind of uh, uplifting bright opening. It definitely is too dark, too mysterious, and too smoky and spicy to work for the high heats like summer. So yeah, those three months are the best. But for occasion, to me, I think this works better in a formal situation, in formal attire, rather than wearing something casual like shorts, maybe even jeans or a hoodie, a t-shirt. Even though, of course, you can still wear it casually, but to be perfectly honest with you, the perfect situation is formal when you're dressed up in a nice dress shirt, or even like a black suit, or even a black tux. I think this one is absolutely going to make that suit and tux shine perfectly and make you very, very mysterious. Like, who is that guy in that tuxedo when they smell this fragrance? But I'll be honest with you, it's going to take the right kind of guy to pull this one off the best. And for gender, this is without a doubt a masculine, male-leaning fragrance. There's nothing feminine about this at all. Of course, some of the most masculine genre of perfumery is Fougere Barbershops. And this one even takes it to a whole another level on the masculine side. So yeah, not feminine. I could never see a woman pulling this one off. At least a woman wearing this one that would get my attention at all. So if you're a guy watching this, you love Fougeres, you love masculine fragrances, and you want to take it up a notch, definitely check Burning Barbershop out. And for age, it kind of goes along with the occasion being formal. Of course, this is leaning on the mature side. I can never see a teenager wearing this one. Even anybody like 25 and under pulling this one off the best either. Definitely more suited for 25 and up, 30 plus, 40, etc. So yeah, a grown gentleman is the absolute best person to wear a burning barbershop. But of course, if you are younger, you like kind of unique, mysterious, niche style fragrances, you could still pull it off. But in my head, definitely picture a gentleman wearing this. So wrapping the review off, talking on the performance of Burning Barbershop, honestly, I was slightly let down based on that no pro profile, based on how it smells. I was expecting almost like a beast mode Fougere fragrance, and that's not really what I got. I got about average performance, which is around eight hours of longevity on skin, but honestly, nothing past the eight hour mark at all. I was hoping it would last a little bit longer, but yeah, that's not the case. As far as the projection, 
the projection was pretty decent for maybe the first three hours and then it started to settle down closer to skin once you get into that base especially with the vanilla the hay and that smokiness as well but honestly it's not the worst performer by any means it definitely can last for the majority of the day especially like a whole work shift you will be basically set and good to go but just don't buy this one expecting like 12 plus hours of longevity because you will be let down and disappointed because you're not going to get that but if you are happy with around the eight hour mark this one is perfectly fine for you when it comes to the performance and the projection like i said does push off pretty good for like i said the first couple hours people will smell you around even though that might not be the best thing because this one, it could be inoffensive to the majority of the public. So be cautious when you wear a burning barbershop and you will be set. But that's gonna do it for my review of DS and Durga's Burning Barbershop. One of the most iconics from this entire house from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've read. But besides that, if you guys have any other recommendations I should check out from this house because I'm very curious. I know they have like Notorious Oud, which I did try briefly, which is like a Rose Oud combination. Didn't really test it further. They have a couple Amers that I'm really curious about as well. So just leave a comment of some of your favorites from DS and Durga, and I'll be sure to check them out and review them down the road. But besides that, leave a like on the video, subscribe down below if you haven't already. And of course, I'll see all of you back here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.